Commander. Uh, no, not that one. Oh, yeah. UFO detected. Let's go! Now, dear viewer, you may be asking yourself, what are XCOM? Well, sit that cute little buddy ears down, I'll explain it, goddammit. In my teenage years, I wasted an inordinate amount of time in the series reboot Enemy Unknown and its sequel, XCOM 2. And then after that, I spent even more time playing Long War. But at a certain point, guided by Lewis and Ben's XCOM streams, I wanted to return to my roots. And that landed me straight in the lap of 1994 nail-biter turn-based strategy game XCOM UFO Defense, Julian Gollop's cult classic. Now, we're actually going to be playing an open source version of the original game created by dedicated modders. Open XCOM is modder friendly and required to play the mod pack I like using. The final mod pack is a compilation of vanilla plus style gameplay editions curated by the community, and it feels well balanced and it's very in line with the design philosophy of the original game. An expanded arsenal, more enemies to fight, new combat locations, this is sort of the long war of the original game. Both Open XCOM and the final mod pack come with a suite of customization options and tweaks. Shit, you can even use the old zoomed in version of the battlescape, although I'm not sure why you'd want to. Hmm. Now you'll know about this game if you're at all interested in the history of retro tactics games, but for the uninitiated, I, I want to take you on a journey. Location Earth 1999. The future question Are we alone in the universe? Do you think we're we'll alone? Answer Yes. Because when the only other intelligent life forms in the universe are a cabal of bloodthirsty aliens, humanity stands alone. From our top secret military base, we wage a secret war against the enemies of mankind. Our troops are handpicked from humanity's most lethal. Song lyrics, common turns of phrase, shit that I've got on my desk right now. Celebrities and pop culture icons. Really cool. Okay, yeah, we're done doing that. As the commander of the XCOM project, it'll be your job to manage the logistical effort of organizing a worldwide research and development effort. Capture and reverse engineer alien technology. Capture and reverse engineer aliens. Learn about their physiology, engineer new solutions to typical combat challenges, and repeat ad nauseum. But before I get ahead of myself, let's start from the top and work our way down. This is the Geoscape, a simulated 3D view of Earth rendered from informational data from our net of high-tech satellites in geosynchronous orbit, very high fidelity. From this screen, we can coordinate the movement of striped craft, monitor and track down alien vessels, and scout out locations for new bases of operation. Now, all this futuristic tech doesn't come from nowhere. The XCOM project is a global effort funded by a council of nations who provide regular funding. In order to keep our financial prospects secure, we'll need to provide adequate protection to our sponsor countries. If we fail to keep Earth airspace and, uh, mission-critical assets secure, our benefactors can choose to opt out of the program at any time, which is to say that their funding will stop and they might seek out alternative solutions to the interstellar menace. So the mission statement is to hastily and methodically position XCOM response bases all over the globe. Now, global security is not just accomplished by sound organizational strategy, but primarily by the deployment of boots-on-the-ground soldiers. Hand-picked veterans of Earthborn theaters of war who exercise a high degree of discretion when it comes to preventing civilian loss of life and minimizing collateral damage. <laughs> 
While the management aspect of XCOM is supremely important, the game is primarily about these high stakes tactical battles. And at the center of those battles are our rank and file XCOM soldiers. Each individual soldier has a spread of stats assigned at random, firing accuracy, morale, strength, throwing accuracy, all very critical skills in their own right. We've got time units. Every action costs time units. Reloading, walking, shooting, you gotta carefully manage this. Your soldiers can get fatigued from walking around too much. Your soldiers have not only hit points, but fatal wounds. If they get too concussed, they'll pass out. Morale for watching their comrades die. If it sounds more like I'm describing the rules for some kind of tabletop RPG rather than a video game, that's because Julian Gollop was actually directly inspired by board games and Traveler specifically when he was making the original XCOM. Imagine the nuance of a mid-campaign Dungeons & Dragons fight, where you have a couple different characters all with their own individual stats, doing their own thing. Except for this time, you control every single piece on the board. The original XCOM walked so Baldur's Gate 3 could run. Now when the reboot came out in 2012, all this stuff was simplified heavily. Let's see, how can I best explain the change between the new XCOM and this game? Oh, yeah. Because this is such a stat-heavy game, and because at a glance you can't really see all this stuff in fights other than clicking on a soldier's stat card, it's actually easier to tag a short little descriptor to the front of everybody's name just so you can tell at a glance what they're good at, roughly. And again, as you'll see a lot in the ways that I play this game, I lifted this system straight from Lewis and Ben. Lowest tier soldiers are chumps. Straight up. Uh, little redeeming qualities other than probably throwing accuracy um, and ability to take bullets oh, over more important characters. One tier up, you got your troopers. These are, mm, they're basically chumps that can sometimes get armor or better guns. Mid-tier firing accuracy, around 50. They're not great. I'm not going to lose any sleep if they die, but eh. Then the tier above that, we've got marksmen. These are guys with above 60 firing accuracy. Very valuable at the early stages of the game when your guys really can't hit a fucking thing. Next up above them, we've got heavies, which are essentially marksmen that have high strength stats, so they can carry heavier weapons rocket launchers, grenade launchers, that kind of thing. Next are our elites. These are top tier XCOM operatives. Great firing accuracy, good strength stat, decent morale, good everything across the board. I should also note that some of the lower tier dudes like troopers and chumps, if they've got good carrying capacity, I'll uh, throw an H on the beginning of their name just so you can tell that they can carry a flamer or a couple more grenades. All this is well and good, and trust me, I love talking about numbers as much as the next guy, but there's only so much theory you can get into without application. So let's really go over one of these XCOM missions with a fine tooth comb and see what we're dealing with here. XCOM detects and shoots down a UFO over Cuba. We immediately dispatch the Sky Ranger to secure the location and secure any alien technology at the site. Now the first step in these XCOM missions is always to clear the landing zone. Chances are there's going to be three to four aliens just milling around outside the spaceship. Chump Joe Biden is the flamer and the first out the door. Oh, come on, man. Now, because he's got the flamethrower, he can't shoot the alien that he spots, but he can call out its location to Chump Kanye West, uh, uh -huh. who sprints out of the door of the Sky Ranger and mag dumps his Spaz-12 right into that sectoid's face. You're all right, Kanye. These chumps are just as good as regular soldiers. The rest of the team files out into this little wooded clearing and does a bang up job of spotting and eliminating any alien threat that they find. And pretty soon we got a bunch of dead tangos and the door to the UFO is pristine and ready for us to make entry. Now this is phase two of most of these landed UFO missions. Stacking up on the door and preparing to breach. Now I will say that up to this point everything's going pretty bog standard. Uh, no, no sidewinders, no surprises. Everything's going good. Until on the alien turn, Joe Biden is mind controlled. Joe, you feeling okay? You got sort of a glazed look in your eye, pal. Ooh, butterfingers. So now, it's a race. We have to try and get inside and disable the mind-controlling sectoid to stop him from panicking or killing any more of our guys because this can get bad quickly. The more guys who begin to die and get mind-controlled, the more guys who are going to lose morale. But here's the kicker. The aliens have got a great overwatch on that central elevator and it's the only way into this model of UFO. 
We can't stand really anywhere at the bottom of the lift because it's a prime spot for them to get shot. The aliens can see down and shoot down, but we can't shoot up. But whoever is standing outside the door will spend a ridiculous amount of time units getting inside and up the elevator. Now, I will say it's been a little while since I played XCOM. This is kind of a triumphant return, and I've forgotten that it takes eight time units to go up the elevator instead of the standard four for moving. So I put Kanye up the elevator, and now he is stuck there and cannot move, facing down an alien, uh, and no one can reinforce him because he's standing on the only way upstairs. <laughs> What then proceeds to occur is an absolute bloodbath where I try to march a myriad of soldiers up the lift and one by one they all take it in the ass. Yeah, that still hurts. Now for those of you who haven't played the original XCOM, if you lose a mission by all of you guys panicking and dying, um, you lose every piece of equipment in including the craft, the landing craft, and you have to repurchase everything again or produce it all again if it's stuff that you can't just buy. So at this point, everybody's panicking. I'm trying to just get one guy inside the Sky Ranger so he can take off and leave. This is a wash, obviously. But then in, in this glorious moment of alien overconfidence, the two remaining sectoids begin to come out of the spaceship so they can shoot our fleeing and panicked soldiers. The only person who isn't panicked on this specific turn is Lovecraft's ghost, and he has already dropped his gun because he was so scared. It gads, it's deep ones. But what he does have is two grenades in his inventory. Your culture is both foreign and strange, and that offends my senses. Yeah. We win the match and recover the entire site. And this, I, I need to remind you, is one. One landing site. You seriously cannot predict how any of these missions will go. What was originally a pretty standard mission went absolutely bonkers over the span of two turns. The pure joy of playing this game is, in truth, you will never have com complete control over any situation. It's like as a DM when you plan out an entire session for a D&D campaign and then your players just decide to walk in the opposite direction and ignore every clue that you throw at them. But sometimes, sometimes those are the most fun. Water bottle! My good boy, it seems that the doom that came to Sarnath was a fragmentation grenade. For heaven's sake, I do feel another novel coming on. Fetch me my pen and ink, my good boy. <gasps> so that's it for our little XCOM excursion for today. I honestly wanted to get into this more, but I didn't want to spoil too much. If this is your first introduction to the original XCOM, I really want to impress upon you that with open XCOM and the final mod pack, these people have taken what is, in my opinion, an aging classic and turned it into something that is on par with some nice indie games that I see coming out today. To give you an impression of the level of quality on display here, this feels like something on par with your Battle Brothers or even Star Sector. It has that small indie game charm and that wealth of content and the depth to the combat that those games provide. Yeah, the UI is a little clunky and there are some gameplay concepts that aren't outright handed to you, but I think if you can get over that, there is um, hours and hours worth of fun to be had here. But that's it for today. I want to do a couple more of these, maybe just picking a number of XCOM fights and blowing them up like I did the last one there. But on to a little channel business. Uh, if you're worried about this, I'm... I'll just clarify now, I'm not done making Star Sector videos. I, I really like doing the Johnny Freight stuff. And, uh, I, I still get, you know, they're, it's not, they're few and far between, but I still get comments from time to time that ask if I'm going to make more. And the answer is yes. Uh, in other news, I have created a Patreon. It's nothing serious. There's, um, some behind the scenes and some cut content type stuff. I'm going to have a video coming up in a couple days that goes a little bit more in depth about it, but I figure I'd throw that here. But with that out of the way, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you guys tune in for the next one. Bye-bye.